So I'm uh, up at this really nice apiary. I'm doing my last honey pull and I'm like four weeks too late and I had to release the queens. I couldn't get back in time. So now I'm back to square one, but they've had a brood break without the treatment. But I want to show you this. So this was a colony that the queen was caged. Still brilliant population. And there's the queen inside this cage. You can see it's a new cage I put on when I, when I found her. They haven't quite built it out because there's not been much ivy and the hornet presence in front of the hives is so bad here that up until recently, the bees have hardly been flying. So they've not brought much nectar in. So there's no flow and no wax built. But the queen is absolutely fine in there. I just want people to know, there she is on the front. You can see her wandering around there. I just want people to realize, to know that if you cage queens and you use these cages, and you put these cages right where they should be amongst the brood nest, okay? And you can manage the fact they may well build some comb on it from time to time. And caging the queens, you know, it's a job, yes, I know, but often I do it when I'm making nukes, which is what I did here, because you can see I've got seven frames here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and two partitions, and that's our frame in the spring that's the indicator. What I'm saying is you can cage your queens, but you don't have to get your timing right. There's loads of time normally for your queens to build back up. Now, this colony is going to struggle, but I've got pollen sub for them all. They're all having pollen sub right now. And we've got two or three weeks of good weather. I will come past and vape this colony. The other ones have all got to be done as well. So I'll do the whole apiary as soon as this honey's off. I've got some good honey on here. You know, some really nice stuff. Super's full of it. Three supers on this and this top one's, this bottom super I should say, has got the least in because I added it later and put the other two back on top just to try. But it's made no difference. But you can see our ivy is in full flower. Um, this apiary is so full of nettles, it's unbelievable, but there's Asian hornets everywhere. There could be a nest anywhere in all this, or several nests anywhere around. I've been treating, I've been swatting, I've been trying to do everything I can to keep the numbers down, but it's just not easy. But the bees have done okay, even with a queen caged and them not doing anything, they are now gonna, gonna, um, gonna go mad, gonna go crazy, and she will lay. I've opened the cage back up, well, I will open up in a second, actually, and then she'll walk out overnight. So I can find my hive tool. I'll just drag that frame out again and show you. So what you do is you literally, you can see the comb. It's all beautifully clean. There's just pollen stored. I don't know if you can see that. The bees are a bit feisty here. These are a darker bee, probably an F2. Terrible, um, terrible of me. I haven't even got notes in this apiary of anything. But the queen is in there, running around. She's right at the top corner at the moment. Let's get some focus on that for you. She is, there she is there, underneath my hive tool right now. The thing is, what I've done a couple of times is I've taken off this cage. You can, you can undo the door here like that, and then you put it back in the cage. Or you can undo this top part and the whole front of the cage comes off. And there she is again, look, she's just there now. But what, what, um, what you've got to be careful of is even though the queens have been caged for so long, they can fly. And I've had a couple that are flying me because I thought, oh, damn, I haven't released her in time. I better get her straight back in and not risk opening the door. But every single time I just undo this and I leave it flat open. Just do that. Leave it open when you put the frame back in. Like that. That is back in. She will walk out in her own time and she will lay. So on goes the pollen sub. I put it in that corner because most of my bee escapes I put on in the way that, I, this is really crazy. You've got to put it on this way. Um, so that's the wrong side actually. You've got to put it in this corner. But basically the bee escapes are on. This is so crazy, you know. This time of year, having pollen sub on underneath your bee escapes, just got stung. Um, and then coming back the next day or the day after and taking off your honey, but at least they've got that kickstart. My whole ethos is they've got the kickstart with the pollen, pollen sub, which will boot them into really laying like crazy. And I will come past and treat this whole apiary within a couple of days of taking the honey off. 
absolute it's been an absolute nightmare this year to be honest i'm really struggling without a workshop uh, i don't deny it but on the positive side i'm getting through it all this is my last apiary this is the last bit of honey to pull we're four weeks late maybe five weeks really i'd like to have everything off usually the end of august early september now we're early october so it's completely ridiculous but you know what we've got good weather the, the next couple of weeks don't look too bad at all because we've got higher temperatures than usual so uh what else can you do other than get on with it but it's just just interesting to see when you use the right cages how you can really benefit from not having to rush back and let your queens out instantly you know i know we want to release our queens straight away and yes obviously i'm going to say release them at the right time because then they're going to have more time to lay but my whole point of, of showing you that was that if you don't if you can't stick to your regimes it doesn't necessarily matter it doesn't mean your queens are going to die the next day because of being caged one day too long I have to say, um, if you look at a lot of Italian beekeepers, that's where those cages come from. Many of them use these cages, okay? I know this season might be slightly longer than the UK, but I think a lot of UK beekeepers, and, and certainly I know a lot of American beekeepers, and I'll be taking these cages with me to Cayman Reynolds' do, and I'm going to be doing a presentation on Cajun Queens, and I'll be explaining what we do, because many people, for example, the um the climate zone around tennessee exactly the same as us they have a good flow and then they get a dearth from about early july onwards exactly the same time they could cage their queens because it's another tool in the box against varroa now i'm not going to go into the the rights or wrongs of treatment or treatment free or whatever you do as long as you maintain some kind of integrated pest management you can incorporate this into that system you can use these to your advantage and once you've got the initial cages paid for they're a little bit pricey i i do i do understand four euros each so you know about three dollars fifty each and when you buy a hundred obviously that's quite a bit of extra money when you've maybe bought a smoker when you bought a new bee suit when you bought more supers it all adds up i know but in terms of having bees alive the following year that's a good investment as far as i'm concerned there's no cost really if, if I could say to you, if you pay 500 euros out or $500 out in one year and it would like give you 20% more bees alive the following year and you didn't have to use treatments apart from oxalic acid, you would jump to it, wouldn't you? So that's what I'm saying I do and that's what I do. I, I do use Apivar strips on my nukes this, this year because um, the time I make my nukes is, when, is just before I cage my queens because I do it at the same time. As you know, I cage my queens, I find the queen, put a, make a nuke, put her uh, in the cage and leave her for the amount of time, then I come back. But what I've done is I've taken a lot of Varroa that might be quite high levels of Varroa and put it in a box. So I give that Apivar strips because it's the best way to do it. I just cannot physically treat with oxalic acid with those nukes at that time of year because i'm too busy doing everything else and this year was a disaster because it was just so hot and that's why i'm so late I'm, i've got no excuses i should have got more done quicker but it was so hot for you for those three weeks of the summer i'm just like whatever i'll i'll pay the penalty where i did benefit this year was the fact that i bought mated queens and even though we've had a crap summer in terms of mating queens, I mean, there was no drones around at all after mid-July, if they weren't eaten by the hornets anyway. I mean, you imagine a, a drone flying in the afternoon, it's like a prime target for, a, for a, um, an Asian hornet because it's slow, they make a lot of noise, and they're fatter than anything else in the colony. So the drones are going to be gone in that kind of scenario this year very, very quickly. So having mated queens just to put in your hive meant that also that your queens didn't have to go out and mate as well. So you, you weren't running the gauntlet of losing your queens to a hornet while it was out mating. So there's many things this year that just by luck, I've kind of managed to ride the, how could you say, ride the worst parts just through, through my own luck. Um, but anyway, I don't know what my bees are going to be like next spring. It's all on the line. We've got a good flow. I know the ivy is going to be at least another two weeks if they can fly, if it can fly. With weather like this, who can argue? You know, we, we've got fantastic temperatures. They've got the pollen sub. They've got that boost. 
uh, this is the last April to get the pollen sub. So from now on, I'll come back in about obviously a day and a half to two days when it's the right time probably late one evening because there's just less hornets and less bees flying pull this honey off and then come back the next day take my bee escapes off and then i'll be whipping those uh, where the bee escapes are upturned like this what i do is i replace it with an upturned feeder um, i've usually got one on every colony and i'll be bringing some spare ones with me but then i upturn the feeder if i haven't finished the pollen sub but i know in most cases the pollen sub will be gone or it'll be very very little left so then i put the feeder on top and give them all a feed as well but saying that they have a lot of stored feed in the colony so i'm not particularly fussed at this current time food levels and i've said it before where we are here we're fortunate we do get good flows and when we have a good flow they seem to bulk up really quickly um i've never really seen a dead out colony in the spring in early spring the problem we have more is varroa and um, asian hornet pressure that puts other added problems like no no young nurse bees so in a nutshell there's nothing more I can really do. And there's nothing more anyone in Brittany and most of France can do this year. It's been an exceptionally bad year. It's been um, a very hard year. We've had really good honey crops, but we've had to really think on our feet to keep those queens laying when otherwise there's not much coming in. And the only way of doing that is giving them some kind of pollen sub and stimulation. So, uh, you know, but like we say, it is what it is. I do love this apiary. Beautiful view there over the valley. That valley there is actually all chestnut. And this apiary can be one of my best chestnut apiaries. And I've got, I think, four now. So, And this winter, I'm moving all these colonies to a quieter place because when it's windy here, it absolutely has. So I've decided I will move out all my colonies. And the reason why I'm going to move them out as well is a lot of my pallets are absolutely shot. You can see here, there's a couple there that are like... <laughs> about to go over and I'll be glad to get the honey off because then I can move the well actually that one there I don't know if you can see it at an angle lower down that actually fell off and I had to put it on another spot just on the grass so um there's a couple of dead outs there's a dead out there to be cleaned up you know but all the rest have got honey on you can see all that you can see the beer scapes there they've got got honey on Look at that ivy behind it, some full flower now. It actually stinks of it, but there's no ivy gone into the supers because the bees aren't flying because of these little shits in front. I mean, so I'm hoping that pollen sub will give that, give them a boost and get that queen laying and it'll stimulate the bees to make a dash for it and get some food. It's all I can hope for. So I'm just adding to my previous video when I was showing you that queen that had been caged. She has actually been caged for about six weeks. So it's more than double. 21 days um, is usually the, about the right time because uh, you don't want to hang around too much. Um, but obviously six weeks is going to be 42 days. So it is double the time that you would normally use. So I said 21 days and people are going to say, oh, well, if you've got drones, yes, totally. If you have drones flying around, still while you're caging your queens and while they're caged i should say while your queens are caged then you should wait 24 days and then all your drones are going to be hatched out as well but for us <laughs> there's absolutely no chance because when the dearth started it was severe and um there's hardly any drones anyway because they've all been eaten up or kicked out really early so i left that queen cage for way too long I missed her. I've got no system to, to make sure I don't miss, miss one out, and I missed it out. I've got to put something on the front of the hives that's going to remind me when each queen is caged because it just works better like that. It's just the time you put in. These are all things I need to do in the forthcoming years to help me be more efficient, but I can see my areas I'm lacking on are causing me massive errors later down the line, <laughs> so it's just needed to um, put things into place. But, um, yeah, six weeks is way too long. Let's see what happens. I'll come back to that hive if I remember and do a, a chat on it in a, few, in a couple of weeks if I can. And um, we'll see what the brood looks like. But anyway, I guarantee I'm the latest beekeeper out there. So I want to hear from you if you're later than me because it'll give me a bit of solace and comfort. <laughs> okay, have a good weekend. Take care. Bye for now.